look, I wouldn't lie, I've had an edible. Now, hello everyone and welcome to Unwind, the guided meditation for the end of the world. The only guided meditation with a wine pairing. Today's wine has been stored under the bonnet of a 1975 Mitsubishi because nothing matters anymore. This is Unwind, the guided meditation for people who've given up wiping everything. Now you might be wondering what qualifies me to take a guided meditation. <laughs> and we're breathing. And we're just going to breathe and drop into the breath. And as we drop into the breath, I would like to remind you all that my PayPal link is paypal.me forward slash double RK entertainment. No one does anything for free. Thank you. I am so hungry. Now, you might be wondering, as you said, what qualifies me. And if you must know, I was once described by a child psychologist and an ex-lover as a bit of a handful. And a judge once referred to me as grossly negligent and responsible for a lot of deaths. I'm still angry that they never aired my episode of MasterChef. Now on to the wine. This show is all about the grape, or as I like to call it, red Panadol. So please, one second, something just hit me there. Ooh. So tonight I'm drinking a wine that could strip the paint off a Cadillac. It's a Greek wine. I believe it's pronounced uh, Domestos. Uh, seriously though, tonight I'm drinking an organic pet nat, which stands for Petilon Natural, or naturally sparkling, which means bisexual ceramicist called Ewan with a beard so matted he looks like a homeless rabbi fucked a lumberjack, fermented some grapes he found off the highway in his backyard in Thornbury. And for those of you playing at home, yes, it tastes like a fucking foot. It has the mouthfeel of sucking on an ingrown toenail with the long, dry finish of battery acid. It's like my molars are made of sherbet and just evaporating in my mouth. And although I may be suffering, on the plus side, it has no pesticides. So it's good for the bees. Good for the bees. Good for them. we need bees. Oh, if my tear ducts weren't hermetically sealed shut by a priest to keep the demons in, I'd be crying right now. So let's begin. Oh. There is just so much saliva in my mouth right now. So today, I'm using a strengthening meditation that a friend's obnoxious part-time boyfriend called Graham accidentally airdropped me at a mistake by an orgy. His thumb was too slippery to work the touchscreen properly. So let's <coughs> breathe. Oh, that had solid. You should already be breathing. And now we drop in to the breath. That's a technical term. We just, just drop in. Just drop in for the breath. Uh, Find where it sits. Where are you breathing into and out of? I am using multiple orifices right now, but I was taught from an early age. You just use whichever holes you have available, but please try and keep it for the ones on the upper half of your body to avoid seepage. And we breathe in and out, in and out. And out. Now I have, I will say, a tendency to breathe high. Just, just here. Just trying to keep all the screams in. But that's me. I'm quirky. These are my screams. I'm stifling. They're just aching to get out. So you find, find where yours sits. Is it in the pit of your stomach, worrying about bills? Is it in your back, which aches from carrying a three-year-old child all day that should be in creche? Or in your temples, which throb, trying to find a new game after new game to entertain your toddlers after only two weeks of isolation and you were two drinks away from suggesting an oven-based game of hide-and-seek? And if you'd known then that all childcare would become cesspits of infection, then you'd probably have skipped the child and gotten an iguana called Gerald instead. Or maybe just let your man finish on the carpet and get a takeaway. 
wherever the breath is. Just feel it and allow it to move through your body, in and out. In, someone just asks if I'm sitting on a toilet, that is none of your business, but I will say that meditation facilitates release. And out, in, oh my God, this is the grape equivalent of Dresden. All right, and out. And while we feel nice, calm, and peaceful, and we feel connected to not only to me, but to yourselves, and the realization dawns that we're all in this together, I feel it's a perfect time to just let you know that my PayPal link, paypal.me forward slash double RK entertainment, is uh, working. And should you choose to make a donation, then who am I to stop you? I am so very hungry and we'll go down the body now so keep breathing you should always be breathing as a general rule just breathe in and just check in with your body as we move down where are you at is it your head spinning from every news update to new figure deafened by the constant reminders from duolingo that you still haven't started your second french lesson after thinking that you could learn a language in the stressful times so good luck trying to conjugate a verb in the fucking apocalypse and out and in to your shoulders so very tight from worry and stress and low level constant fear just release no, no, that didn't work. Just again, just in, and just let go of those worries. They don't affect you anymore. No, still there. They are so very present. In that case, look, no worry. If they're not releasing, there's a very easy solution. Just Yes, I am so relaxed. Now, remember, oh, we've had a little, oh, how upsetting to have a homophobic eyelash at this juncture. Remember, if you're having trouble with some of the exercises that we're doing here today, remember that there is no wrong answer in this pandemic except for the ones that our leaders have given on multiple opportunities. This is your pandemic as much as it is anyone else's. Now breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in positive, loving, warm energy and breathe out. Expel that cold negativity as I pick my eyelash from my eye one more time. Fantastic, that's going to keep happening. In with the good and out with the bad. In this moment, we can only take control of one thing and one thing only in this chaos, and that is our breath. We breathe in, and as we breathe out, let go of anything that leaves a bitter taste in your mouth. For instance, I see people are trying to suggest isolation hacks, always making the bed putting on shoes so that you feel ready for work. And to those good people, I say, breathe in and fuck off. I don't need you to patronize me with life hacks like some condescending facsimile of Marie Kondo. She's the fucking reason my apartment has nothing in it to keep me amused during all this madness. This is like a prison. Although quite frankly, if this was prison, I'd be getting laid a whole lot more. I would do so fucking well. Now look. People can be helpful, but when it comes down to it, we'll all get through this in our own special way. And for me, that is sitting in my filth, judging people from my own special, unique nest of narcissism spite and a cab frank so rough it could be a TAC Christmas commercial. So unpalatable it could be Lady Gaga's last album. So textured that it could be Seal's face. Just let your mind pause on those people. Breathe in and fuck off. 
Scott Morrison for categorizing churches and places of worship as workplaces so they can stay open in flagrant contradiction of Henry isolation regulation, thereby putting lives at risk and at the same time not taxing those workplaces. Breathe in and fuck off. Donald Trump, the man who has to be the baby every christening, the bride at every wedding, and the corpse at every funeral, for making the states bid against each other for medical equipment, thereby turning a pandemic into big business and letting America become a disastrous mix of The Apprentice and The Hunger Games, breathe in and fuck off. To the inequality that still prevails when it comes to the police fining people for isolation violation. To the fact that the known cases of cross-infection are found in wealthy white communities. But overwhelmingly, it is the poor, immigrant, First Nations and sex worker communities that are getting monstrous fines for relatively small infringements. To the fact that revenue raising is still operating during a pandemic. To all the people who are keeping busy, to all the ones who are so intent to share with everyone how productive they've been by learning a new language while you sit there looking guiltily at your 497th unchecked reminder from that free online university course about Mexican modern art, to the noise and panic and demands of the tension you feel as you approach another human being. Breathe in and fuck off. Happy Passover, happy Pesach to all of the lovely Jews out there, my lovely Jewish brethren. And finally, to Cardinal Pell. This is a big one. I know. It hurts. That this man is walking free. That he only faced 405 days in prison while his victims live a lifetime trying to repair the damage he caused. Breathe in. Breathe in and fuck off. And as we do this, I want you to feel lighter and freer. And as we feel that way, I want to try something new. I call it the highs of the day. You see, ah, yeah, that went into a tooth. You see, we've all never been so anxious and yet so tired at the same time. As a community, and we are, we are all going through this together. And it takes an individual toll as well. I mean, I don't know whether to ship myself because I'm scared or because I just can't be bothered to get off the couch. Just to be safe, I've laid down a lot of plastic tarpaulin. Either way, I'm going to ship myself, whether I need to or just want to. Because guided meditations, and I quote, really take it out of me. We're going to have to burn this couch, by the way. Now, as part of the highs of the day, I'm good, I'm good. No Karen Carpenter here. Now, as part of the highs of the day, I'm going to read some items that might raise your spirits and add some positivity to this award-winning cry for help. This tornado of torpor we're all swirling around in like Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton in Twister. Now, first high of the day, me. I am incredibly high right now. So big breath in. There are oh, so many colors. Next, the Bill Gates Foundation. They have been spending millions over decades funding pandemic research and they have just announced that they will fund seven simultaneous clinical trials for a vaccine. This will cost them one billion dollars minimum and the Bill Gates Foundation has put that forward. It is fantastic news. Next in Italy, hard, one of the hardest hit places by this, a 101 year old man who survived the Spanish flu and the Holocaust who was diagnosed with COVID-19 was recently released from hospital and is recovering well. And cases are falling around the world. Next high of the day, controversial, wait for it. Tory party leader, Boris Johnson, has come down with a scorching case of La Rona. Now, I would never wish harm on an individual. 
But when this individual gambled with the lives of 65 million people, treating them as cattle in a numbers game and didn't act fast enough, not to mention years of a horrific voting record, austerity measures, and basically working the system as if he were the penguin from Batman, I couldn't be more pleased that this has befallen a man who resembles a vicious bowl of unset custard with a face like a collapsed lung. So I'm happy. He's got a taste of the other side. I wish you well, Boris, but I hope you fucking hack up a lung and get some empathy. And the last high of the day for us, thank you. Yes, fuck the Tories. This whole thing, this is the last high. This whole thing, what we've all been through as a, as a planet, as a collective, this whole thing is temporary. That's right. It feels like forever. It feels huge. It feels insurmountable. It feels foreign. But so did the French rugby team, and that didn't stop me. And now we breathe. Now I want you to imagine your breath growing hotter and bigger, but not heavier. In fact, the more you breathe, with each breath you become lighter and lighter. Your chest is rising and you no longer feel the ground through your feet. You are floating high in the air. It could be the meditation. It could be the codeine I dropped into the wine. It doesn't matter. What matters is the sensation and your body. Float for me. Rise up. See yourself. And look at your house. Look at it with real honesty. What do you see? Do you see someone who deserves all the shit they pile on themselves? Or do you see someone doing their best to survive? Do you see someone who holds up other people but never gets the attention they deserve? Do you see someone who is inches away from leaving the gas on and putting a can of hairspray into the microwave and walking out the door as the house turns into a fireball? Perhaps you see someone who is loved and cherished and needed by their family and friends, even though they might not know it. Perhaps you see someone wonderful, and although they may not feel strong enough to get through this, they are. And for those tiny stumbles along the way, they have friends and family around them to help them through. And we breathe, keep it regular, and come back down to earth. I would also like to address uh, religion, uh, to those who want to look to the Bible for lessons. Don't. It's shit. It's one book written by 12 dudes. The only thing I want 12 dudes working on is me in a steam room with adequate drainage. I don't want to say I'm a slut, but my bed has gutters. And we're breathing. And we're finding peace. And... I just found a... I just found a... Oh, God, what the fuck is... What is that? Is that a tooth? It's not an adult. That's a, that's a baby tooth. And we're breathing. And we're not worrying about why I know what a baby tooth looks like once it's been removed from the skull. And let the breath come down to your normal pace. Feel where it sits now. Is it lower? Easier, smoother. If it is, then well done to me. If it's not, then remember, nothing matters anymore, and time, like money and gender, is purely a construct. Doesn't that feel better? Haven't I helped you? I love you all. This is a really shit time, but we'll get through it. Uh, and if any of you ever need to talk, if any of you ever need someone, uh, if you need a friend, if you need a helping hand, call your family.